In this video, I'm going to be making a barn door out of these pieces of poplar and uh, see how it comes. cut the sides of my barn door. I'm going to make them about four and a half inches wide. It's about the max I can get out of this piece. Um, so I'm going to cut the two side rails out of this and then over here I'll be able to get my top and middle out of it. So cut this first. Since my door width is going to be about 28 inches um, and each rail on the sides are going to be full top to bottom and they're going to be four and a half inches wide, that means it's going to make my middle piece around 19 inches. I'm going to cut at 20 and a half just, just to be safe, cut a little bit big. I'm going to cut two sets of them because I need three. Gonna set it up for four and nine sixteenths so that my final pass through the joiner will make my finished width four and a half. height of my door. It's going to be 80 and a half inches. So I'm going to cut these exact at 80 and a half. Next, we're going to be routing out our grooves for the door. These are the router bits. Uh, they sell these online at Home Depot. Um, so it shows you right there what, what each one does, which I feel like is kind of self-explanatory, but um, yeah, next is going to be routing out these two vertical pieces, so then we can figure out the width of the horizontal pieces. So. I want to route. So this is what I'm going to take out. I'm going to leave half and then this is going to be the back. This will just be like whatever it is. So this is what we're going to be taking out right here. Looks like right around there. Is up with that. <clears throat> Don't 
does look like it matches up with that pretty good. <clears throat> Sadly, the base of that router is so large, I'm going to have to move my clamps and then go back to it. Now, we're going to route it out. Now that we have this routed out, I'm going to do the other one, but going to copy this exact thing uh, onto this one. What I should have done on the other one uh, before routing it is I'm going to belt sand this. Just give it a little bit of a smooth, smooth face so the router can follow it. Now that both these pieces have that routed groove, I'm going to measure for my horizontal pieces that are going to go in between all three of them. What I like to do for this, I like to put this piece kind of flat here, flat here on a square bench um, and make sure the width is exactly what I want all the way up through. Just gives me a really accurate reading on what this piece is going to be. And then when I measure it, I'm measuring inside the groove, the longest point. So it's going to be 20 inches. 20 inches is going to be from the insides of these two grooves. So that's what my, what my pieces are going to be cut at. And when I cut these, the first thing I'm going to do is actually going to be square one edge like I did with this. Um, so I'm going to do that. So now, gonna cut these all at 20 inches. Alright, now these are all cut. The next thing is going to be to um, route these out the, with the other router bit. So we're going to get that set up in the router and then, uh, then route these out. This is going to be just a test run. I just set this bit up in here. Um, I want to make sure that the face is going to come out smooth before I run the actual pieces that are going to go in there. So see how it comes out. So I'm going to pick the face on these. I kind of do it based on, you know, how nice the front is and also if they're warped at all. Uh, I marked it as bottom because this kind of has some kind of a flaky edge that I couldn't get out because the pieces weren't wide enough um, to run it through the joiner a couple more times. So I marked it down as the bottom because you won't see that. So that's why I'm running that piece like that. So we're going to run that. Take a look at this piece here. Get all the faces set. route these. Alright, now to 
everything's routed out, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these together and I'm going to mark, I'm going to put a center mark. And what I already did with my center piece, as you see, I have both sides grooved out, so that's going to go in the center. I already put a center dash on this. I'm going to put a center line on here so that I know where this piece is going to go when I measure for my panels. So. We have 80 and a half, means 40 and a quarter. It's gonna be half. Forty and a quarter. Forty and a quarter. All right. So now we're gonna put it together to get measurement for our panels. So far, everything's dropping in really nice. So that is the rough look that it's gonna be that rail in the middle. Happy with it so far. Now I'm gonna measure the panels. So when measuring the panel, um, obviously the panel needs to go from uh, inside of these grooves. So 19, technically this piece here goes from there to there and this piece was 20. And that opening is a little over, so I should be fine doing 20 inch width. And I already checked, both panels are gonna be the same. Um, since I did a half inch groove, I'm gonna take this measurement here, I'm gonna add an inch, and then subtract a 16th to give myself a little bit of play. Uh, Cause I got half inch there, half inch there, that gives me the inch. So my panel's gonna be 34 7 sixteenths. So let's cut those. I'm gonna cut it out of half inch unfinished plywood uh, so that this door can be painted white. And then just simply sand them pretty smooth. We're gonna paint this so it doesn't have to be super smooth, but obviously the smoother it is now, uh, the better it'll be later on. in it. I use this wood putty to, uh, to fill that a little bit. So let's dry it out a little bit. And then after you fill it, I'd let it set probably at least five minutes before sanding it flat. Let it fully dry. That way it'll come out uh, dead smooth after sanding it. <clears throat> now the next step is going to be gluing it, putting it together. So um, this process isn't so bad. You just definitely want to make sure you use a lot of extra glue so it just squeezes out. Um, and also that it goes together square, which is why I have my square here. I'm going to make sure all the edges and everything is, is square because that will save a lot of work and headache later on. I already dribbled. 
saw that. No! <laughs> underneath you. Get my sanded pieces. First one. Sorry about the Thank you. Not shake the table. Do my best not to jump. So far it's going together pretty smooth. It's right in that groove. This is just half inch uh, unfinished plywood. So. Fun part is making sure everything's square once it's all in. Yep. That'd be fun. There you go. Oh, that's not looking too bad. You want to make sure that all your pieces are facing the way you want them to. So it won't fit together properly. Actually, why don't you take that glue? Why don't you just put another little little line on the top of those guys all the way down? Extra glue is not going to hurt nothing. Perfect. Uh, 
before we do that, I'm going to wipe off There's any. There. Feels like most of it. Let's see how square we came out. It's not bad. The top. That way a little bit. Dead square down here. So hold the bottom here and I'm going to back the top over. That makes a difference. It did look like it moved. Rather the glue squeeze out than nothing come out. If anything, it also helps fill in some of the gaps. <clears throat> also, it's not a bad idea to double check square. Sometimes it moves when the gluing up process. This looks really good. Yeah. Looks very square. So let's carry it over and we'll just lean it up against, against this right here. The next step, um, since we unclamped it, is going to be to belt sand it. I'm going to sand, I'm going to belt sand this way over these seams uh, first, and then I will do the vertical rails and kind of clean up some of the scratches that went against the grain here. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. This is the back. So. belt sanded before I sand the vertical rails uh, there's some gaps in some of these joints so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill them before I belt sand the rest now we sand the verticals and we'll sand right off the uh, the excess fill Wood Now for the last step, uh, we finished sand it. Gonna use 150 grit 
for everything, and then we're gonna also gonna ease these edges all the way around so it's nothing sharp. <laughs> is going to be priming. For best results, uh, I recommend sanding the primer. Uh, I sand all the edges, also sand the actual corners to knock down any, uh, just any burrs that you feel. And uh, yeah. So we're gonna do that now, before we spray the paint. I found that it's easier for me if I use my Festool sander, uh, set to a low, I think I set it to three, and I use 150 grit for sanding the flat stuff, the flat panels and stuff. It's time to spray the paint. And that's how to make a barn door. Um, I did make this, I don't know if I said it when I was planning it down, the thickness is inch and three eighths, which is a typical door thickness. Um, but other than that, I think I specified all the measurements. And if you uh, look out for the upcoming video, we're gonna be mounting this. I got typical barn door hardware off Home Depot, but they sell it on Amazon all over the place. Um, and yeah, look out for that video, like and subscribe. Here's the finished installed barn door. Didn't end up getting an install video together for this, but this is the finished uh, barn door all installed. I know obviously the two doors are different styles, but the customer has not requested to change that door out yet, but seems like something eventually gonna switch all interior doors to mission style. Uh, so figured they'd start here, but. That is the barn door. The hardware was from Home Depot. The kit was, I believe, like $65 for the track uh, and the wheels and everything like that. So, finished barn door.